You're listening to The Heart of You on Paris Underground Radio. For more great content, please join us on Patreon. Hello, my name is Annette Delu, and you are listening to The Heart of You, where we explore tools and modalities for your soul discovery. You will not only improve your relationship to yourself, but also your relationship with others on a spiritual, emotional, and physical level. Are you ready to discover who you truly are? Let's get started. Let's talk about forgiveness first for a minute before I get into what exactly Ho'oponopono is. Forgiveness is one of those things that is elusive to a lot of us. We have a tendency to really hang on to that blame and it's very, very difficult to move out of it sometimes. Holding a grudge or staying in non-forgiveness over a particular situation keeps you stuck for the most part for various reasons. The first reason is your energy in general is stuck in the past. And if you're stuck in the past, you're not able to move forward into the present moment. Now, this doesn't mean that you must have this other person who did that one thing to you or whatever situation arose that caused a rift in the relationship. You don't have to have that person in your life anymore if you choose not to. But holding on to lack of forgiveness is simply creating discord and possible disease within your body and lower and negative energies within your auric field, that can have a profound impact on your day-to-day life without even realizing that it's having an impact. This is what happens when we react from our wounding. It is what happens when we are sort of operating from that general state of hurt. And in order to get out of that general state of hurt, Forgiveness needs to happen. Now, one of my mentors who you may have listened to our episode together, they are Lee and Sherry from Relationship Reinvented. They said to me that forgiveness is giving up on the idea that the past can be anything different than what it was. Now think about that for a second. That is taking out that idea that, oh, I should have done things differently or I should have, I should have, I should have. Take all the should haves out of your life because you can't. You can't go back in time in physicality. You can't go back in time and rewrite those stories. We can do that energetically and that can have a very beautiful, profound healing effect. But physically, we can't go back in time at this moment anyway, and change the things that we have said or done. So forgiveness is not only for yourself. It is forgiveness of self. It is also forgiveness of the other person involved or the other people involved. So if you have ever been stuck in victim mentality or if you've ever felt like the world is out to get you, This is going to be an incredibly opening experience for you to use Ho'oponopono as a prayer to be able to call in the willingness to forgive. And that's something I also learned through my other mentors, Dov and Nicole, is that when you are in that space of unforgiveness, Sometimes it's hard to go from sort of wallowing in that victim mentality to actually forgiving. And there are many steps that happen in between those two points. So in order to be able to get to that point of forgiveness, sometimes we have to take that baby step into just, you know, sort of playing with the idea of forgiving. So you're not quite there yet. You're not quite forgiving yet but you're playing with the idea as in, I'm gonna call in the willingness to do so. So instead of saying, I do forgive this person or this situation, I call in the willingness to forgive this person. 
And that just sort of gives you that space to be open to doing the work, to be open to start forgiving. Now, I understand that certain situations can get really complicated. So if you're in a relationship with somebody and they said something that really, really hurt you, but maybe they're not aware that whatever they said hurt you, then you're operating out of your wounding. You're reacting back at them from your wounding. They have no idea why you're doing it. There is a lack of communication and then a breakdown of the energy between you. And that can happen with a misunderstanding. That can happen with absolutely any statement that you make to another person because you have no idea what that person happens to be going through at that very moment. Maybe they're in the process of doing their shadow work. So they're sort of pulling up all of this childhood wounding that they had. So maybe some really benign thing that you just said to somebody triggered that childhood wounding response in them. And then you have no idea why that's happening. That is where taking a step back, being sort of the observer of the situation and being able to have compassion for everybody's experience can really come into play. Now, right now we're talking about misunderstandings. We're talking about even if somebody said something intending on hurting you, that is still coming from a place of wounding. And it's not intending to, let's say, hurt you specifically. It is their projection of how they are feeling. And when you're dealing with that, it can be really, really difficult. It can be really hard to not only deal with the energy of that, but then also to understand that this person most likely does not mean it. And if they do, That's totally fine as well. You do not have to take this on as truth for yourself. So a lot of this takes work. It takes practice and it takes strength within yourself to not react or to react from your heart space and say, hey, you know what? The thing you just said really hit home and it hurt. So I would prefer if you don't speak to me like that again, or I would prefer if You explained to me what you meant by that thing that you said. And being able to have a conversation about it can give you a better idea as to what the purpose of that particular statement or that particular action was. Now, if you come to a a realization that let's say this person isn't in energetic alignment with you, if they are in their own wounding, if they're operating from a toxic standpoint, then yeah, you can make the decision to walk away from that person. You can decide to not have that person in your life. But what happens then? Are you simply hanging on to that feeling of hurt and pain, even though that person isn't in your life anymore? And think about how much that person is occupying your thoughts, your feelings, your auric field, even though that person is no longer in your life. Doesn't that defeat the purpose of getting that person out of your life, out of your energetic field, if you're going to hold on to all of that toxicity? So Ho'oponopono is going to be a really good way to start letting go of all of that. Now, when it comes to trauma, let's say something has happened to you, you know, for example, sexual abuse or emotional or physical abuse, this can still work for that as well. Now, obviously that's going to take much deeper energy healing. That's going to take much deeper therapy. It's going to take a lot more to sort of bring in that forgiveness for the person who caused the trauma, but the process is the same. You may have to go deeper. You may have to go through the healing process in a different way, or it might take longer, but the process is always the same. So what is Ho'oponopono? It is a Hawaiian word that comes from Ho'o, which means to make, and Pono, which means right, so to make right. Now, 
the double statement of pono pono is meaning that you are here to make right for yourself and to others. So when you're saying this prayer, it is healing not only for yourself, it is also healing for others. Now, you might ask, why why do I need to make things right with myself? Well, in any situation where forgiveness is needed, there is forgiveness that is needed on both sides. So if something happened where you were really hurt or there was some sort of big fight, you have to take responsibility for your part in that. So you might think, well, I did nothing wrong. Well, you may not have done anything wrong, but are you beating yourself up over it? Are you taking on that negativity? So that forgiveness for self is to forgive yourself for taking on that negativity. That forgiveness of self It's to forgive yourself for putting you in that situation to begin with. There are so many different levels of self-forgiveness that need to happen within a situation such as this, within a trauma, within anything that has to do with forgiveness. Now, when it comes to this prayer, the Ho'oponopono prayer, it is incredibly, incredibly simple. It is four lines. I'm sorry please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I thank you. Love you. When you're reciting this prayer, You can recite it in general, or you can actually recite it directed at somebody in particular. For me, if I'm in a place of absolute non-forgiveness, which that doesn't happen too often anymore, but when it did, it was definitely hard for me to offer up forgiveness for people who had hurt me or who I had been hurt by their actions. So when you say, I'm sorry, in this general way, You are saying you're sorry to potentially yourself. I'm sorry for hanging on to this negative energy. I'm sorry to myself for holding on to this unforgiveness, for creating more suffering by being sad or depressed about whatever this situation was for longer than necessary. This can be directed outward to somebody else. I'm sorry for the things that I said. I'm sorry for misunderstanding. I'm sorry for not asking you what you might be going through right now. The I'm sorry portion of the prayer can be directed in so many different ways. And if you truly don't know what you're sorry for in a particular situation, it's totally fine. It's a general I'm sorry. And you can just send that that energy out into the universe and it will go to the places that it needs to go. It's the same with the please forgive me. Now, you might be asking, who are you asking for forgiveness? Well, it's the same thing. You could be asking a particular person. You could be asking yourself, your higher self. You could be asking people that are in your energetic field, your spirit team, your angels, your guides. Please forgive me for acting the way that I did. It might sound funny, but I have had screaming matches with my angels and my spirit team because I've been frustrated with not understanding certain messages or frustrated with the messages they did give me. And even though they do not require our apologies, they do not require our forgiveness, or asking for forgiveness of them. It is something that I do like to do to sort of clear the energy and clear the air. We all have moments where we kind of feel stuck in our spiritual journey. For that reason, I have created a two-day soul discovery workshop where we really start to tap in to those gifts that you have, discover those beautiful spiritual gifts, We access the Akashic Records. We talk about how you can really understand and listen 
to your intuition and your guides. We do group work where you can practice these skills with others in a beautiful, divinely guided environment. If you would like to take part in this incredible healing work, I recommend that you head to my website and go to the store and you can sign up for this personalized two-day workshop in my apartment in Paris, right here in Paris. You can join me for two full days and we are going to explore everything that you need to know about your soul. That is infinitesoullove.com forward slash store. The next one is taking place April 15th and 16th, 2023. Whether you live in France or whether you're just trying to learn French, sometimes navigating the nuance of the vocabulary can be daunting. Navigating the French is a podcast that explores each one of these nuances that will help you integrate the language into your everyday vocabulary and help you understand the history of that word or concept. Emily Monaco is a delight to listen to. So head over to Paris Underground Radio, navigating the French. We will be right back with the heart of you after a word from our sponsors. Welcome back to The Heart of You on Paris Underground Radio. The next part of the prayer is thank you. We all know that gratitude is an incredibly powerful energy. So saying thank you is not thanking the person who hurt you or created this trauma. You're not thanking the person for the trauma, although you might after you realize what it has taught you. But If you're in that space of still trying to forgive, you're definitely not going to be able or willing to say thank you to the perpetrator, so to speak. So the thank you is just general gratitude for the experience, for the ability to have forgiveness, for the ability to be here. Just gratitude for your existence, gratitude for your life. It can be as general or as specific as you need it to be. And I love you is the most powerful statement you can make. Love is the most powerful energy. So when you're saying I love you, you could say I love you to myself. You could say I love you to the other person to offer that just absolute forgiveness If you don't want to offer up that love to the other person, you can simply offer it to the universe and say, I love you. All of these words hold a particular vibration. And actually, all words hold a particular vibration. And I'm sure you can imagine that lower energy words, such as hate or guilt or shame, They hold a lower vibration. So if you are in a place of really low vibration, and there's nothing wrong with that. We all go through it. It's a constant process for us humans here on this planet. If you are going through something like sadness or grief or guilt or shame, saying these words can be enough to just pull you out of that lower or negative energy. Even if you're not directing this prayer at anything in particular, so let's say you don't have any big drama that has happened in your life or there's nothing specific that you feel you need to forgive, just saying the prayer over and over again as a chant almost can really raise your vibration So you can start healing. So you can start pulling yourself out of that sadness, out of that grief. I remember there was one time in particular that I was using this prayer. It was several years ago. I was in California on a business trip. And I just so happened to be working through some pretty heavy sadness regarding a relationship. And I was just upset. I was sad. I was 
full of grief. I was angry. I was feeling all of the emotions. And I remember riding my bicycle on the ocean front near Venice Beach. And I was listening to a Ho'oponopono meditation. And you can find a ton of them on YouTube and they're all very, very different. And you can simply just listen to each one to see which one resonates for you. But I was listening to one of these Ho'oponopono prayers on repeat on YouTube and I was reciting it as I was riding my bike along the ocean in my happy place because the ocean is my happy place. So I'm <laughs> I'm riding my bike sobbing, like so- like absolutely crying my eyes out, saying this prayer near the ocean. And it was so incredibly healing for me. It was such a profound moment because up until that point, I hadn't allowed myself the space and the time and the energy release of being able to start that forgiveness process. So that's where my forgiveness started for this person. Now, that wasn't the end. It wasn't that just on that day on the beach, riding my bike, chanting this prayer, completely eliminated all of my feelings of hurt or lack of forgiveness for this person. That's not what happened. But what it did was it raised my vibration just enough So I was willing to start doing the work that I needed to do to be able to get to the bottom of why I was feeling the way that I was, why I was feeling unworthy, why I was feeling unattractive and unwanted and abandoned and start diving into those wounds that I had from childhood. So this can be an incredibly powerful prayer to really jumpstart your healing as well. So make sure you're in a space that you're ready and willing to do so. And you might find that you have resistance to saying this prayer. And if you do, maybe it's not the right time. Or maybe it's the time to push through and start it and see how it makes you feel. Use your intuition on that to see what is aligned for you. I have had many situations in this spiritual journey where I have had resistance to certain modalities or certain things, and typically it is because it is either the wrong time or it is because I am actually building up resistance to it because it's something that I'm not willing to look at yet, which, you know, when you look at it is technically, okay, well, that would be considered not the right time because I hadn't decided to actually do the work yet. I hadn't decided that, yes, this is something I really want to look at or I really want to work on. So this can pull out a lot of things in your subconscious, a lot of the things that you have locked away in those little cubes in the back of your mind, in the back of your energy field. So make sure that you're willing and ready to start doing the work because just simply saying the prayer over and over and over again without doing the work It's not to say that it won't help you because it absolutely will, but it will absolutely open the doors for you to start doing more of the work. So if you're ready, say it with me. Get comfortable. Close your eyes. Maybe put your hand on your heart. And we're going to say this three times. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Now take a deep breath, inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. And notice the difference in how you feel. Forgiveness is everything. 
It is what is going to help you propel forward on your journey. If you're needing extra help with this forgiveness piece, please do not hesitate to contact me. You can always reach me on my website at infinitesoullove.com. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next episode. This episode of The Heart of You was produced by Jennifer Garrity for Paris Underground Radio. For more great content, please join us on Patreon.